What's going on everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nation's blogontheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, got your taxes done, hopefully. And uh, as you can see, I'm all moved in. Uh, you really can't see, but you can see behind me is a little bit different. Uh, my family and I moved recently, so uh, in the process of setting everything up, and uh, we thought the Dallas Cowboys would be setting something up on Wednesday. Wednesday, of course, July 15th, which was the deadline. The deadline has officially come and gone, and the Dallas Cowboys do not have a long-term contract in place with Dak Prescott. What does this mean? Well, it means that the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott cannot negotiate a long-term contract before the first day of next year's new league year. So Dak Prescott will be playing the 2020 season on the franchise tag tender that he already signed. There's no threat of Dak Prescott holding out, so you can take that idea and take it out of the equation. This was, uh, to be honest, this was a big miss by the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, look, I know that you either feel this way yourself or you know somebody that feels this way, that Dak Prescott is trash, he's not a good quarterback, he's carried, etc. The reality, there is so much objective data that supports and proves that Dak Prescott is among the top quarterbacks in the National Football League, especially when you account for the fact that quarterbacks who were near their twilight years like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, even Aaron Rodgers, those guys are going to be gone soon, certainly over the life of whatever contract Dak Prescott would have signed. And Dak Prescott's going to be a top five or top six, top seven quarterback, however you want to slice it. And the reality is that somebody like that is worth a market rate deal. We know that the Cowboys certainly had their offers. It was reported on Tuesday night by NFL Network's Jane Slater that the latest or final, however you want to put it, offer from the Cowboys was between 33 and $35 million dollars with over $100 million guaranteed, and that this was for five years. We know that that was kind of the sticking point. Team Dak wanted four years, the Cowboys wanted five years. And the problem with that offer, look, that's a lot of money. That, that's a life-changing amount of money. We can all agree with that. However, in the world that this is happening in, in the contracts that this is being compared to, that really is, uh, is not um, that much. It's, it's really barely market rate. Over $100 million in guarantees sounds nice until you remember that Jared Goff signed a deal last year that had over $110 million guaranteed. Dak Prescott is better than Jared Goff. He's of the same draft class. Jared Goff's deal was also a four-year extension. I mean, there are so many, you know, points that you could, you know, kind of direct yourself to, to to see how the Cowboys failed here. And that is really what happened. The Cowboys will have Dak Prescott for 2020, as mentioned, so it's not a total failure. It's not like he's holding out or anything like that. However, what they seem to not be able to recognize, the Cowboys, is that this is only going to get more expensive. Dak Prescott's franchise tag in 2020 is valued at $31.4 million. All right, so you have to at least have that be your floor, right? $31.4 million. What's more is, look, let's be real. Let's, let's talk in reality here. The Dallas Cowboys are not franchise tagging Dak Prescott this season to watch him walk away next season, which means at the very worst, they will franchise tag him again next season. That value is just south of $38 million, which means approximately Dak Prescott effectively has a two-year deal worth $69 million. And that means the Cowboys have to match something that at the very least meets that. I mean, two years at $69 million is $34.5 million per year. So unless a deal is averaging more than $34 million, uh, excuse me, $34.5 million per year, it's not meeting what Dak Prescott already effectively has. What's more is this time, four years, five years, the Dallas Cowboys seem to have been willing to push this, uh, you know, forward another year where more deals are going to be in place. Perhaps Deshaun Watson is going to get paid to the Houston Texans. Perhaps by the time the Cowboys are at the negotiating table with Dak Prescott next year, Lamar Jackson will have been paid. If you want to throw Josh Allen in there, be my guest. The reality, though, is that more players, more quarterbacks are going to get paid and therefore more contracts are going to become variables for the Cowboys to deal with. We know that this typically does not end well. Dak Prescott is now a quarterback that will be playing on the franchise tag. There are not a lot of examples of that in NFL history. The most infamous is certainly Kirk Cousins with Washington. And we saw how Kirk Cousins parlayed that into a three-year, fully guaranteed $84 million deal with the Minnesota Vikings. He just signed an extension with them this offseason incidentally this is um 
this this the Cowboys seem to have not willing to have been ready to acquiesce to Dak Prescott's demands and it's going to cost him it's going to cost him because guess what's going to happen next year the Cowboys are going to say well you know uh let, let's let's do it at, at this value at 39 million dollars per year but the value is going to go up and maybe Dak Prescott and his team are going to you know bend on something maybe they're not the, the probability is that they are not going to bend they are probably going to bend further and further and further into their own points because they risked it again. We saw Dak Prescott risk it, gamble his, I don't want to say career, but gamble his financial status by playing on the final year of his rookie deal a year ago, and he balled out. He balled out, and now Dak Prescott, who played very well last season, has added C.D. Lamb to the fold. The reality is that Dak Prescott's probably going to play very well in 2020, and therefore, when it comes time to negotiate again, he's going to have even more power, even more leverage, and the Dallas Cowboys, if they don't realize that, they're going to lose him. This was... Um, um, this was not a great day for the Dallas Cowboys, but that's okay. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's just, this is a risky proposition. The Cowboys have entered a risky relationship with the most important position in the game of professional football. And if they're comfortable with that, well, I mean, hey, that's uh, that's how America's team operates. We'll, of course, be talking about this all throughout the rest of the week and over the course of the rest of the offseason over at bloggingtheboys.com. Make sure to subscribe right here to the official Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. We have lots of film breakdowns, reviews, player profiles and things like that. And make sure while you're at it to subscribe to the Blog and the Boys podcast feed. We are available on all major podcast platforms. You get two episodes every single day, different voices, different personalities, breaking down the Cowboys, the latest and greatest, all things going on in the world of America's team. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. I am at RJ Ochoa. You can also shoot me an email, rj.ochoa at sbnation.com. Also, you can do me a favor and you can have the absolute best day ever. You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.